Hello, my name's Rob. I'm here today at uh, Birchfield's Forest Garden um, and I'm here for the Herbal Solstice event. So, can you tell me who you are, please? I'm Jane Morris. I'm the deputy chair of the Friends of This Park and um, one of the instigators of this forest garden. I was involved in the group that campaigned for it in the first place. And what is a forest garden exactly? It's a seven layer beneficial guild of plants i.e. the high canopy, the lower trees, the bushes and canes and the herbaceous plants and the root plants and the climbers. The forest garden is a managed uh, woodland with, with trees spaced enough for the other layers to thrive where we plant plants of different uses. Predominantly food plants, but also the plants that help the food plants do well. The garden is beautiful, actually. I'd, I'd, I'd been here a couple of times before, but never really kind of kind of absolved myself into the into the garden. Um, but the fact that you know the majority of the plants that are grown here are edible, you know, and that it's a kind of it's a grassroots community project. Just the fact that we're here in the garden itself, and it's an, and it's an, it's a place where we can just kind of do and learn and educate each other. Um, it's, it's really nice. I think it's, a, it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant site. There's just so many medicinal plants and exciting plants. Uh, there's such variety, diversity, uh, you know, all those things that, things that permaculture is about. It would be great to see people harvesting medicinal plants and the weeds that are growing, growing locally and, and utilising them. The idea of the first half of it is just take a plant and try and draw it. A few tips um, on drawing. Um, don't worry about it looking exactly like it, but we're trying to get it to look as lifelike as possible. But if you want to have a bit of creative flair, um, then just go, go for it. <laughs> the idea of it first came to us because people were consistently asking me to do some herbal drawing workshops in Manchester as I've done them um, across the country in different festivals over the last couple of years. Probably because the workshop itself is a really nice workshop, it's really lovely, it's kind of educational, it's meditative, you learn quite a lot, it's very empowering, so just by the very nature of you just drawing you're kind of relaxed and it kind of gives you new skills because you learn about herbs themselves and the medicinal properties of herbs and it's empowering to yourself because you actually do all the work, you're not told what to do, you're not told what the herbs do for you, you find out for yourself. So I think because of that people were really interested in in doing that workshop or at least kind of offering the workshop to people who who are in the permaculture network. Okay, hello there. Can you tell me what your name is, please? My, my name's Liz, Liz Cole. Why are you here today, please? Um, I've been running a couple of workshops on using herbs. The first one was on using herbs uh, for your bath and for your hair. So just very, very simple ingredients like cider vinegar, salt, oatmeal, herbs, essential oils. You can use herbs either that you've bought or that you've grown and you can use them fresh or you can use them dried. I've brought along a few, uh, few dried ones here. I've got some comfrey, some lavender, some lemon balm and some marigolds. If you're buying oils, do make sure you, it should say pure essential oil on it. They're very, very concentrated, so you have to make sure that you use them, um, you always dilute them in something. Ne never use them straight on your skin. You don't have to put the, put the oil in, but it's just, it does give it a little bit, you know, it's just a little bit more concentrated than the rosemary on its own. If you, especially if you were sort of giving them for presents. So instead of using soap, you can use a That's right. And if you have a shower and not a bath, then you can, you know, you use it in the shower, you just moisten it and then just, you know, rub it. You could tie it to the shower, it doesn't You could probably. I'm trying to I chose to do a workshop about first aid because I think it's really important that we reclaim the information that people have always had about the plants that grow around and about them. And I think people should be encouraged to look after their own health as far as is possible and to use the plants that grow around and about them to make themselves feel better. We covered everything from insect stings to hangovers and a few things in between, okay. and it was good fun. 
Okay, I'm Craig Wintsburn, I'm a community artist specialising in African drumming. Me and my friend Chris, we run the West African Drumming Circle. Both been to Africa, studied out there, and uh, it's a really nice social event. Right, I've been to a couple myself, uh, I'm trying to develop a little bit of rhythm, but it's taken quite some time. But one thing I have noticed is when everybody's drumming away and it's all in sequence, the, uh, the drums start to sing to themselves. Can you yeah. tell me why that is? A lot of it has got to do with the the patterns, the, the the stuff that we do are traditional patterns. You might get two or three different different patterns all going at once, and when the when the rhythm's going at a nice pace, it, it does actually sing out to you. It's quite magical, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really lovely. It, it, lovely. It's uh, hip, hypnotic, you know. It's, for me, it's my my weekly meditation. You know, I just. I'm, I'm, I'm in a different place when I'm, when I'm playing drums. Okay, I'm going to do a rhythm called Yole. It is a rhythm that was developed in Guinea. And they, uh, they would always play this rhythm when, when, when the, the riders come home, like from not always warring, but you know, they might be on a hunting trip. And so whenever the warriors come back on the horses, they play this rhythm, you know, Yole. Have you um, you've come down from Levenshoom, is that right? Um, I used to, we used to, well I used to live in Levenshoom, and, and we're here as part of a group that has the word Levenshoom in its title. But I actually live in Hume at the moment. Oh, do you? So yeah. We kind of so you dropped the levy bit. Well, we're still working with it, the Levenshoom uh, bicycle orchestra it's thing. It's got a nice ring to it. It does. It's got a certain weight to it. Hasn't got a name, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's not entirely accurate anymore. So Unfortunately. What, so what sort of stuff are you going to play today? That, look, that guitar looks like it's in a bit of action. It's seen a lot of action, that one. A lot of action, the dinosaur sticker and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, today we're going to do some kind of acoustic bass pieces. Herbs themselves, the plants themselves, but just plants generally, are really beneficial. I think we've, we've lost a lot of our knowledge about it. We're so eager to just kind of point, to, go to the chemist and get something off the shelf, some tablet off the shelf that we don't even know what's in it. So, so if we can kind of rekindle the knowledge of herbs and what's around us, like just on our doorstep and how beneficial they are. I do think it's important to be sustainable. You know, I've been living off my lettuces for months now. Yeah, it's, it's something I'd like to look into a lot more. It's really, yeah, whetted my appetite of uh, wanting to understand a bit more. <laughs> Might be the one to start watering with. Yeah, 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 yeah